Thank you for coming on the show today. Well, thank you for having me. So, sir, appreciate all you do here in the Valley. I appreciate what you do in the Valley because you do a lot of faith-based things and you have a lot of faith-based films. Yes, we do. Uh, it's been a kind of a God thing that uh, our little ministry based here, international ministry based here in Fresno, uh, got connected to faith films back in 2011 with the movie Courageous that was uh, put out by the Kendricks Brothers and Sherwood Pictures. Uh, and uh, it was about law enforcement. And we had started a new law enforcement ministry here in the Valley called Code 3 International, and we used that to create uh, Central Valley Police Week. Had huge support from uh, uh, Chief Dyer and, and Margaret Mims, Sheriff Sheriff, all the other agencies around here. So we did a big red carpet premiere, our first. Wow. Had Kevin Downs, who started the movie, who is now the CEO of Kingdom Story Company, which is about the films that we're going to be talking about. But uh, we didn't know what we were doing, but b unbelievably, we were number one in all of North America for box office sales. Wow. U.S. and Canada, right here in Fresno, because we reached out to law enforcement couples. And we had the entire River Park Shopping Center turned into a big static display for law enforcement. We arranged three of the helicopters to fly over. So faith-based and law enforcement. Yeah, it was, uh, of course, the theme of the movie was towards law enforcement. And uh, it was about becoming fathers of integrity, and but it used the law enforcement theme. Why did you guys use law enforcement? Did you have a background? Well, we, well no. My, our history as a ministry, we were connected with Point Man Leadership Institute Global, which was very top down. Started by Chief Bob Vernon, L.A. P.D. retired. Okay. Under the umbrella of Hume Lake Christian Camps up the hill here. So we were part of that, but and my son left uh, a role as a director up at Hume Lake and went into law enforcement. And so simultaneously, we wanted to start a new ministry to law enforcement families that was more bottom up instead of top down. So we started Code 3 International, and that was timely because the Courageous movie came along. We used it for a tool. So, you know, I'm the director at Jaron Ministries International. It was founded by Dr. Jim Cece, who's a pastor at Campus Bible Church. He's serving his 30th year there now. And uh, we've always existed to equip leaders for more effective Christian service, and through those leaders, reach the world for Christ. So Faith Films is just another tool in our tool bag. And here, uh, with the success of Courageous uh, being number one all of North America, the filmmakers are looking at the numbers. They're looking at ticket sales, and they say, what is going on in <laughs> Fresno? So they started calling and saying, how can, can you help us with promoting our movie? Absolutely. So we had taken Courageous on to the Philippines and shared it with uh, wow. about 4,300 law enforcement in the Philippines and had a great impact. Uh, the, the officer chaplain who wrote the Bible study to go along with the film, we took him to the Philippines and so that was multiplied internationally. So it's, it's here we are, uh, we're coming up on our next film. We just, if a lot of people have heard of the Jesus Revolution that was yeah. last year. So yes. we hosted Kevin Downs producer, CEO of, of Kingdom Story Company, and he brought Jonathan Rumi from The Chosen series, which is huge, most right. watched TV series. So we were here last February for that red carpet. Then local um, filmmaker uh, Brock Heasley created the Shift movie. Right. And we hosted that red carpet recently, and he was here. And Chris Boajo is a good friend. He'd been here a couple other times with uh, Chris Dowling films, Where Hope Grows. So we partnered with Break the Barriers on that one for our outreach. I love that. Uh, and then because it was focused on a, a young man who is affected by Down syndrome. And then, uh, so Chris was a good friend. He was here. So here we come with the, with the next one coming out April 26th. The Unsung Hero. Unsung Hero. And uh, this is a story about the small bone family, and, and we just opened this flyer just moments ago. Is so this um, a true story? This is a true story about a family from Australia. If you've heard of For King and Country, very popular Christian band in the world right now, uh, Joel and Luke Smallbone are two of the sons from this family of, of seven, and uh, seven kids. And uh, uh, so before Luke and 
and Joel grew up enough to be the band that they are. Their uh, other son, uh, the other son is their manager, Ben Smallbone's a movie maker, so it's a big family thing. But the story is, uh, without uh, spoilers, is they came to the U.S. in hopes to, you know, he had, was a uh, music company um, manager and uh, things failed. He brought his family to the U.S. because he was promised a, a new job and that fell through. So they were destitute, poor, no money. Here's this big family, one baby in the oven. And so this movie is their story, but it includes the first star of their family. That was Rebecca St. James, who was a Grammy Award winning right. uh, artist. And she's coming to Fresno. I love that. April 26th for the next red carpet premiere in Fresno. Is it's, she going to sing too? Well, I, I love I've, her I've, concerts. I've, I have <laughs> got a request for that. I haven't heard back from her handler yet whether she's going to be singing, but we're trying to secure a place to have her speak for women. So, so what do you think, because I, I notice, you know, Christian films are getting a little more mainstream. What do you think the shift is and how do you like watching that happen? Because I think it's great that it's becoming a little more mainstream now. Well, with the Kendricks brothers, the Irwin brothers and others, uh, they have got their experience being involved as production guys, you know, ESPN or wherever, that's Irwin brothers history. And they learn how to tr crank out really good movies with really great stories. And I think there's a real hunger by the general population in our country for, for good, wholesome movies. We kind of get tired and, of smut after a while as a country, right? Exactly. <laughs> in, in that, the, the, the production quality is so high. Now Lionsgate, Sony Entertainment Group, they've, they've invested millions into that market. So... Now um, now it's going international, output deals internationally. So these films are going around the world and the streaming platforms, of course. So it's very exciting. Uh, of course, the Irwin Brothers and Kevin Downs, they're behind the movies. The, the most recent was Ordinary Angels with Alan Richards. I watched that. Hillary that was amazing. Schwank. That was at Wasn't my church. It? Excellent. Yes. Still in some theaters. Mm -hmm. Jesus Revolution, of course. I can only imagine the Bart Millard story from Mercy Me. Uh, Kurt Warner's story, American Underdog, came out on the tail of COVID. So, you know, it didn't do as well as they hoped because people were still anxious right. about getting back into the theaters. During that time, they, that before that, they put out the documentary called Jesus Music. And then right the weekend COVID started, the Jeremy Camp story, I, I Still Believe, came out. And so it's been a joy for me to be on set for these movies, many of them, uh, or the Red Carpet of Mirrors. We just in New York uh, a couple weeks ago for the Red Carpet of Mirror for Ordinary Angels. And uh, thankfully to the folks in here in the Central Valley, they are big supporters of Faith Films, and they've right. made the Valley legendary in this market. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> How did you get, can I, like, tell us a little bit about your background, your start into this and into like spreading the word and all of that. Mm, I, I was blessed to grow up in a really awesome youth focused, missions focused church in, in San Diego County. And um, when was uh, asked to come up to the North, Northern California to build a youth camp. And it's kind of the carrot. God dangled in our front of our race to turn our nose away from where we were, loved Escondido, California, where we grew up, but um, fell in love with the area up in Northern California where we were, where we raised our boys, and uh, I was a contractor, and but always involved in youth ministry, men's ministry, and loved to use media, was a worship leader, but uh, I was Dr. Jim Sisu, I mentioned, founder of Jaren Ministries invited me to go with him on a trip to the Philippines because they've been going overseas with teams to do training for pastors in third world countries. We went, I went, and uh, uh, it was, it was, you know, it was something that I really loved doing. Started leading teams, construction teams, medical teams. Wow. And uh, different types of teams around the world. And uh, then back to the story of, of Code 3 when we realized that we were gonna be taking teams of cops overseas, like we did with Courageous. Um, you know, I put myself through the chaplaincy here and, and the police academy here and PTSD training here. So wow, to, you, to come to the level of, of chaplaincy training. You really uh, went deep. So um, we did that 
uh, so like another area, other areas of ministries that we have with the people that serve under our banner. Um, and again, it comes back to the story of Courageous and the success with Courageous film. So you said a construction background. Mm-hmm. So then how, the movies, that's a whole other beast. How did it you really get, is. yeah. Well, the construction <laughs> in missions led us into doing tribal outreach. So building missionaries' homes in the jungle and, wow. uh, you know, airstrips, medical clinics, you know, churches. We spent about a dozen years of intense, you know, when the tsunami hit Indonesia, we were taking teams to the north coast of Papua New Guinea and helping missionaries rebuild and deal with the medical and whatnot. Uh, so um, that experience, the international side blended with the movie side. Now we have connections in terms to help these movies That's go really international. Cool. <laughs> it's crazy, huh? <laughs> it is. It's a great story. And so what is it like when you guys cast and work with actors? Um, because it is, you know, Hollywood and Christianity sometimes is a very, there's a gap. And so how do you find these actors to do these films? And is it important that the actors that w- work on these are Christians as well? No, I mean, uh, um, th- these the filmmakers, you know, we're just, we're ba- basically local grassroots promoters. You right. know? We've just been blessed to be able to host actors here for red carpet premieres. I think this will be our 26th, I think, which is crazy. No other right. city in the country has done that. Really? Uh, you know, they'll, they'll, when a movie comes out, they'll choose Hollywood or New York, like the last one, or, or Nashville or you know Dallas for the pre-red right. carpet premiere with all the Hollywood glitz and glamour. But We've always been blessed to do one on opening weekend with talent because all of that promotional push by the studios has passed and now it's coming to the screens, you know, 3,000 right. screens across the country. But so answer your question, getting to know these filmmakers, they, they're going after quality actors, just like, you know, right. Hilary Schwenk in, in Ordinary Angels. And the stories have real impact on a lot of these actors. You know, it really touches them. I mean, they read the script and they say, this is something I want to be a part of because it has true lasting value in terms of a message. And I always say every mes- every movie has a message or multiple messages. And so many of the films that come out of Hollywood have negative messages for our kids. You know? They really do. I mean, and so it's, it's fun to hear the heart of the movie makers that that's their, their goal, is that they want to provide good quality entertainment for our families. And do you, are you involved in the process? Like, do you go on set when they are filming and what's the vibe like on set? The the vibe like on a faith film set is awesome. Like the Kendricks, I mean, they start with prayer every day. They, That's what I was gonna ask you if they the, do that. Oh yeah, and a lot of the cast and a lot of the crew aren't necessarily believers or have any faith, you know? Um, Fresno and Clovis, you know, we're, we're so blessed with the collaborative spirit among churches and, and nonprofits here. It's unique in our country. Right. And our Fresno Pre- Clovis prayer breakfast. So the committee reached out. And you can, noticed that because you lived everywhere. So you kind of <laughs> noticed the difference. Well, I mean, they reached, the committee reached out. Can you get Dallas Jenkins? Because they know I worked with Dallas Jenkins. Can oh, you, wow. So at the last hour, no. he said yes. So we announced. I mean, Dallas sent me a quick video that we shared at the Chris, Fresno Clovis mission, uh, prayer breakfast that he's coming next February 18th. The last hour? You yeah. Had- the la- I mean, literally that night. He says, do you really want me to make an iPhone greeting? Or can it be better? I says, just do, do whatever is convenient, you know, just, we need it. <laughs> wow. So he sent impressive. it, and, and uh, the committee got it on, up on the screen for the breakfast. But to get to know Dallas, and his heart for his cast and his crew, because there's, there's people of every faith on set working together. Right. But he can, he can create the atmosphere of caring for these people that are working hard. Whereas on a Hollywood set, all they care about is getting it in the can and making money on it. Right. You know, it's a big difference. So um, I hope that's a, a, a healthy answer to your question. Oh, no, I, I was curious. I was wondering, I think our viewers are curious about how that all works and how it goes down. Because like I said, there is a difference between Hollywood and... Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and the, the fun thing, Fargo, is that it's impacting Hollywood. 
Hollywood. Right. Uh, there's great stories, like Rich Peluso's, the CEO of uh, Sony Affirm Films. And we were down, uh, their next movie's The Forge coming out, Kendrick's movie. And we were down at Sony Studios uh, to watch, the, uh, for example, Journey to Bethlehem, which came out this last Christmas. Wonderful musical, fantastic movie. Uh, Antonio Banderas, you know, Joel Smallbone from For King Country. Um, Mariah Smallbone, who was a music artist. Um, excellent, wonderful musical. And Rich is telling the story about putting this before the rest of the Sony executives, you know. Or like the Kingdom story, going to Lionsgate and say, our next movie is called Jesus Revolution. And you'd think, we really want to have a movie with the name Jesus in the title, you know. But once they see the rough cut, they said, man, you're not changing a thing. This is excellent. You know, we're behind it. So we hear those stories that these faith films are impacting even the, the, the executives from these film studios. <laughs> That's so impressive. Yeah. So what's the next thing that you're working on? It seems that there's so many different projects in motion well, that Kingdom you have. Well, Kingdom Story is coming out. There is a, a, a big lineup of excellent movies coming uh, in the next 13, 14 months. Reagan movie with, with Dennis Quaid plays Ronald Reagan. Oh. We're waiting to hear more about that. Um, interesting. If you remember the coach that was fired up in Bremerton, uh, Bremerton, 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 Washington for kneeling and praying on the 50-yard right. line, and his case went to the Supreme Court. Right. He's calling me tomorrow, and we're working on bringing him here to Fresno because he won that case, and now there's a movie called Average Joe coming out about his story. So there's a whole lineup. I mean, that's a long answer. Uh, no, but stay great. tuned because there's some great movies coming out. And because of the connection God given Fresno with these filmmakers, the potential to have talent and speakers come for events is we're there. I mean, it's, it's going to be exciting. Oh, that's awesome. Is it hard to decipher? I don't know who goes to the process ever, if there's like a group of you when the scripts are coming, because that's, you know, everyone has a script, everyone has a story, and then is it hard to say, well, gosh, these are all good. We only have so much funding for this. How do you guys decipher that? Well, that's not my world. I'm just, okay, so you I'm don't just do local that. grassroots promotion. They tell, you, they tell you what it is in that But I, do, I did hear this. It was the first time I went to the National Religious Broadcasters Convention. It was huge in Nashville. I mean, it was like drinking from a fire hydrant. I mean, I could have been there another week just to go meet people. Wow. But Kingdom Story had a big display out in front of the, the exhibition hall. And they had a lot of people come to them with with pitches for new movies. So they get a lot of those, you know. I, that's what I would imagine. And um, Clovis Hills, before Ordinary Angels came out, that's my hosted, hosted <laughs> yeah. Andy Irwin. And he was here. We did a screening. And so talking with Andy, you know, uh, whether it was last time I'd seen him was in Hollywood at the Chinese Theater for the red carpet of Jesus Revolution. So to have him come to Fresno is a big deal for us, you know. Uh, but to have time with him to sit and talk like this and hear the stories that, you know, nobody has time to, to hear of how these movies are impacting people's lives is huge. So that's what I'm looking forward to in the future of bringing more po folks like Andy here um, and Rebecca St. James. Unsung Hero is about their mom, who was really the one who kept the family on an even keel with their faith and, you know, no food in the, in the pantry, wow. no food in the refrigerator. They're gathered around as a family, looking at a couple of dollars in a jar, so that's all we have, you know. But she, she, she's the unsung hero in this story. So uh, we're working to have an event where mother, daughter, grandma come and, and hear her speak on oh, April yeah. 27th, so that's what we're working on today. That's great. So those kind of things is what we're thinking way ahead with, with like Coach from Average Joe. So what, as a community, and people watching that want to become involved or help out, what can we do as a community to like keep this happening, to support you guys in the, any way we can? Uh, best question ever, because th th the ticket sales is what determines how long a movie will stay in the theater, you know? So opening weekend is crucial. So if people of faith want to see these tools go around the globe and be used to encourage people and change lives, uh, it's get out and in invest your entertainment dollars opening weekend in the theater. Movies in the theater are still number one entertainment. Then it's big, big sports events, you know. 
but our our you know our kids are so distracted nowadays with 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 uh, <laughs> devices. Yes. You know, yes. uh, I say, hey, parents, grandparents, invest in opening weekend because you're voting twice. You're telling guys like Andy Irwin and and Kevin Downs, keep up the good work, guys. It's not an easy life. Um, and then, and you're telling Hollywood, this is the kind of movies we want. They're looking at the numbers closely. So if we want to tell Hollywood we want wholesome films right. for families, then invest your entertainment dollars on opening weekend. And um, where do we go to follow everything and to know what movies you guys have coming out? Is there a website and uh, Instagram? We're trying to create that now. Uh, I use my Facebook right now. Okay, so that's we can follow that's, you. That's the messaging. I, you know, I'm tra I'm communicating with people around the world every day through that. It's just to come after COVID. It's become a new. So everyone's got to follow this man on Facebook. <laughs> you can follow me on Facebook, but um, we're working on that. We're, we've got a new website structure that we're trying to to. We've we've got a new guy on our staff, uh, retired pastor in Honolulu. I talked to him right before I walked in here. He's doing a review and a new podcast. So we're trying to get that public. I can get that to you. Maybe we can do another session here. And come I back love and that. And so, okay, so ticket sales is one thing. What about the swag? Can we buy like the shirts and the Well, the stuff they just that sent comes? me, I just loaded in my truck before I came <laughs> down here. Uh, this Sunday night okay. is a free pre-screening. This is the first, the first time in Fresno we're doing a pre-screening of a movie at a church. Andy came to Clo Clovis Hills um, but that was a special side event. This right. one is the studio, Lionsgate's actually behind this. Okay. Um, so even Isn't though- Isn't there limited seating though, or we can- Well, no, it's gonna be, uh, normally the, they send me an RSVP link that okay. I send out to leaders in the city to come okay. to a screening. So on March 24th, I think that's the right, Sunday, this coming Sunday, it's 24th. Um, um, yes. We'll have a, an event, and Helen and uh, David Smallbone, the real people who are in the movie, oh, that's awesome. the parents of this story are coming to share. Q&A? Yeah, before, actually before, because they got to get on the, you know. Planet. And then what's Monday night? And Monday night's a, another screening at Maya Cinemas. That's typically what we've done, is have a pre-screening at the theater. And then we can all buy tickets for that. There's No, there's those that, are strictly there, special are... invitation RSVP. Uh oh, guys! You have to wait for it to come out on the screen. So, I mean, if there's a way people can contact you and you can let us know, we can re figure out a way to reach out to them. But we're it's, the idea. It's influencers in the in the industry. They talk who in this in the valley are influencers have a voice that can come to the pre-screening and help tell the story of this movie. So, opening weekend, everybody will come. Right. Uh, so we're having David and Helen Smallbone Sunday night at Cornerstone Church at the Wilson Theater. Showing, uh, I just got the the print on an iPad and just dropped it off on my way here. <laughs> so that's this Sunday night, and then Monday night at Maya. So if there's a way, I don't know, if people can reach out to us yeah. through you, that'd be good. Yeah, you guys just contact us. Thank you so much for coming. And thank you for doing what you do. Well, and likewise, thank you so much as well. Appreciate it.
Thank you for coming on the show today. Hi, so, so happy to be here. You've been doing a lot of cool stuff and you got some new knowledge you're gonna share with us. So tell our audience yeah. what you do. Well, I do a form of energy healing called the emotion code and the body code. Am I supposed to be looking at you or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. So what I do is I help people find um, emotions that are trapped in the body that need to be released and then help them release those energetically. <laughs> wow. Okay. So what is trapped in our body that we should be releasing? So we can all, we all experience a myriad of emotions every day, but sometimes we have emotions that are overwhelming or we, we have shock or something that's uh, like fear or grief or something like that happens to us. And if we don't process that emotion correctly, then it can get trapped in the body and then it can start causing dis-ease in the body. And then, um, you know, all kinds of things can start happening that are not good for us. It can start um, causing physical ailments and, and stuff. So they figure this out by doing muscle testing or kinesiology. Um, Dr. Bradley Nelson is the one who discovered this. He was a chiropractor and he started muscle testing some of his clients and found out that they had emotions that were trapped in their body that were stuck that needed to be released. And once he started releasing those trapped emotions, the physical ailments in the body started repairing themselves. Wow, so when did you learn all this? And what made you like interested in this? It was about five or six years ago. I was in a very toxic relationship or a marriage for 11 and a half years. Wow. And I was having all these debilitating things happening. I just felt like I was falling apart. Every time I went to the doctor, it was something else. Um, from the very first week I started seeing this person, I started having stomach ulcers. No I had to go way. to the emergency room and I was like, what? Like, where did this come from? So your body starts telling you things when you're around people and I've learned that you have to start listening to that because right away my body was picking up an energy around this person saying, I don't want to be here and I didn't listen to that and I just kept on going and then the longer we were together, the more things started happening. I had um, neuropathy, I was diagnosed with neuropathy and um, IBS and there was just so many things that just started happening and I one day I just asked my doctor like what can I do I don't want to be on medications I don't want to keep taking all this stuff they all have side effects and she said well one thing you can do is get out of the stressful environment she said something's going on in your home isn't it and I said yeah it is and I am she kind of picked up that I was in an abusive marriage and um, I was trying to get out, I just didn't know how to at the time, but I managed to get out about six years ago and took my kids and all of a sudden I noticed that my stomach ulcers were gone, completely gone, just <laughs> disappeared just from not being around that environment. But I, a friend of mine had shown me the book called The Emotion Code and I read it and I started learning about how to release trapped emotions and how it was all related. And I started doing the work on myself and noticed that all kinds of things started clearing up in my body. And it was just one thing after another started getting better and getting better. And then some of my friends were like, they couldn't even recognize me. They're like, I was a different person. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. And then I said, you know what, since this is doing so well, I want to learn how to do this and help others. Because there were so many people asking me how to do it. And I was showing them how they could do it. So I got my certification to do emotion code and then body code. And now that's what I do for a living. So at what point do people need to come to you? And like, how do you get like so many sessions? Like what's the process of someone's coming to you and being like, kind of another you six years ago <laughs> walks into your door. What do you tell them to do? Yeah. Well, a lot of the clients that I see are people that were domestic violence victims. Cause I, I kind of talk about that my story. That is my story where I came from. Well, it was my story. <laughs> right. And I had PTSD from that as well. And I got rid of PTSD completely by using this. So I let people know that they can do the same thing. And then when they, I start talking to them, I try to tell them they can do this themselves too. So they don't have to just come to me. I try to teach them how they can muscle test themselves and they can release trapped emotions. And one of the first things I like to show them is like um, the sway tests. You can stand up and if you um, just stand there and start thinking about something, you'll notice that your body will start swaying. And if you think about love, your body's gonna naturally sway forward. And when you think about hate or something awful, your body starts swaying backwards. And it's kind of like a lie detector. If you've ever been standing next to somebody, you notice they start leaning back, you kind of know they're still saying something that's not a truth to them. So their body wants to be removed from it because that's how energy is. 
when we're talking about something positive or something we really believe in and you get passionate about it and you notice how you move forward that's energy. It's a pool of energy. What if you're just trying to be comfortable? Yeah. It's fine. I think back in the chair because I'm trying to be comfortable. It's fine. Be but comfortable. That's, that's really interesting. I love that. And I love like when they show like um, body language, you know, if your legs are like this, you're more open or closed off. So it's kind of the same concept, yeah. but emotion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So energy is all around us. We are energetic bodies. And when we're thinking about positive and loving things, you're pulled towards it. So I try to show them that they can clear your mind and then just start thinking about a question and if your body is wanting it and it's something that you love that's good for you your body is going to be pulling forward pulling towards it well and what's great now is we can like record ourselves on our phones if someone wanted to do that in like their room because you don't always know what you're you you know when you're in it you're not knowing what your body's (laughs) doing and then you can kind of watch back and be like oh yeah yep and there's and what I do is I work with people over FaceTime or Zoom. I don't, you don't even have to be in person. Because, oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, because we're all connected. Everything is energy. And it's kind of like sending a prayer to somebody. You can send thoughts and intentions towards somebody. And that energy is received by them. It really is. So if they give me permission to muscle test them, then what I do is I muscle test by proxy for them. <clears throat> and I'll go through my chart. I How can you chart. muscle test? Through Zoom. Because yeah. <laughs> I just ask for their permission. And as soon as they give me their permission and it's okay to connect with them, then I, I ask if I connected and I muscle test for them. I brought my pendulum. I use a pendulum to muscle test. <laughs> okay. So this is, everybody has an energy field around their bodies. It's like three feet to six feet. And depending on what emotions are coming off of you, the emotions of love are, are a little stronger than like grief and stuff and the lower vibration frequencies. So if you, this is one way that you can muscle test. You can muscle test all kinds of ways. Like there's the ring and method people use with their fingers. They'll lock it and they'll be strong if it's a truth to them. But I like to use a pendulum. I just love the way it looks and it resonated with me. If I, am I saying a truth or saying my name, then it'll swing this way. That's a yes for me. And you can, anyone can do this. You can use your necklace or anything and really? hold it in front of you and the energy will move it for you. So that's a yes answer. And if I start talking to no, I think about no or something negative, then the pendulum swings left and right for me. So then I'll ask if I can connect to the person that I'm on the phone with or whoever I'm talking to. As long as I get their permission and I get a yes, I can start muscle testing for that person. By the way, the pendulum swings. Yeah. And you said anybody can do this? Yep. Anybody can do this. You can look on YouTube and find out ways wow. to muscle test. That's my favorite way to do it, though, is just use a pendulum and then the energy moves. And people are always shocked, like, how did you know, like, how did you know, like, this shock happened when I was 11? I was in a car accident or something. Like, it's your body. It's your energy. And it's telling me, you know, that that's the emotion that you got trapped at that age. And that's over the phone <laughs> you can do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah, Anywhere in the world, because we're all energy bodies and and we're all connected. It's beautiful. (laughs) Wow. And so you you got certified for this. So what exactly, what's the title again that you would call yourself? uh, Emotion Code and Body Code Practitioner. Okay. So again, like when people come to you for the first time, what do you suggest when they come to you with trauma and stuff? I'm assuming it's different per person of how much they need to see you or whatever, but what's What's typical? What's the next process? Someone comes to you, they want help. What do you do? You see them once a week? It's usually about once a week or okay. once every two weeks. It's just how they're feeling. And you usually want to take a couple days in between to kind of let everything settle and reacclimate to the new state. Because it's you're doing changing. You're releasing and you're transferring energies. Energy doesn't die, but you can transmute it. So you can transmute a negative vibration, emotion like shame or something, which is the lowest on the frequency scale to something like joy and peace. And then you're vibrating. Your whole body is going to resonate at a new frequency state. So you have to get take a couple days to get used to that new frequency. So shame's the lowest? Yeah, Why shame is, is the lowest. It's whenever they measured it, shame was the lowest on the chart that anybody would resonate with. It was a very low vibration. If you ever walk into a room and you notice there's somebody that's just light and happy and oh, airy and they're course, so joyful, yeah. they have all this love energy and they just attract everybody to them. Right. And then there's somebody that's always like or hiding in the corner or off to the side and, and their energy is so low that nobody really goes to them. They're putting out an energy like, leave me alone or... Right. You kind of stay away from that person because their energy field is a lot smaller and it's closed in. And everything's energy and vibration like Albert Einstein and Nikola Tesla talked about. 
So what I do is I'll talk to them a little bit and I'll tell them, you don't need to tell me your story because sometimes when you retell your story, whatever it is, it can re-traumatize the body because the mind doesn't know if it's the first time you're doing it or it's happening again. So all I do is ask if I have permission to connect and then I start asking what emotions their body's ready to release. And we just go step by step and we take it slow, one thing at a time. And when their body, I get a no that it's time to stop, then we stop and then we take a break. And some people feel a little tired after a session. Some people feel happy and excited. Everybody wow. processes it differently. Yeah. So you take new clients and everything? Yep. Yep. And um, I also use a bioresonance scanner. I brought that too to show you. It's it, it's okay. actually, it's like you can download it. Do you want to like scan me? <laughs> <laughs> what I'd have to do is set up a profile for you. Oh, it'd be like a lot of questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And anybody can use it. I actually got one of the apps before they stopped or got a device before they stopped selling them. Now they've improved it so much. You can just download it like an app on your phone. Oh, cool. And then they just create a profile on there and then they can scan their selves and it'll show your chakras, your meridians, your vitals, comprehensive. It'll tell you a full body scan, like what's if your vitamins are low in a certain area wow. or your organs are not resonating at a good frequency. It'll tell you your heart, your lungs, your kidney, everything it gives you a full report and it gets emailed to you. And one of my good friends, she's a doctor here in town. She's one of the first ones who bought one from me and she just loves it. And we don't do the device anymore though, but you can download the app still and use that. So then yeah. tell me about like some of your clientele and like what their success story is. I mean, do you, have you had people like for years? Have you had people just a few? Like, yeah. What's some of the stuff that's been happening? Some of them have the very first couple clients I was working on. It seemed like some people that were going through some depression and just feeling stuck. And then they were just shocked how a couple months later, like everything just started turning around because everything is a frequency. And once you start changing that, you start attracting better things like love and abundance, even abundance and money has a frequency and a vibration. And if you're not sending out love to that, then you're not going to get it. You're telling that frequency to go away. You don't no, we it. all We all need that <laughs> <Yeah>. frequency. <laughs> One of my favorite stories is my fr my best friend. She moved to Oregon and her little dog hurt itself and it was paralyzed. And she said that the vet said there wasn't really much they could do. Just keep, you know, taking care of it. But they probably had to put the dog down. And I said, let me do an emotion code session on your dog. Let me just see what would happen. No way. Her dog started walking again walking again. So that's a thing you can actually yeah. do that on animals? I've, yeah. never, I've never heard of that. That's yeah. really cool. You can uh, start working on pets. And my doctor's friend, uh, the doctor friend I was telling you about also, her little dog was coughing. And I went to her house one day and they had invited me over for dinner. And I said, why don't I do a session on your little dog? And I found out that like around age five, she um, had a bunch of like grief and stuff stuck in her and we released it. And she said, you know what? She said, that's about the time that another little, we had another little dog and she got hit in the street and she died. And I remember she was like loafing around for a while after that. And so she had grief stuck in her and body. And that is true. You see the pets miss the other. That is so crazy. Yeah. Well, okay. So I, I'm kind of seeing what you're saying about like, so you know, we have those days where like when it rains, it pours and everything's going wrong. <laughs> is that because we are putting the the first bad thing that happened into the second bad? And is that what you're saying kind of about the yes. energy buildup? Yes. And then sometimes it seems like everything going is going great at once. Is that... All exactly. Kind of yes. And then you're focusing on that energy. So you're going to bring more of it. So in those times, you got to do this mental thing. It's not always the easiest thing to do, but just start thinking about what is the positive thing you want to come out of this. And as soon as you start focusing on the positive things, you're going to start seeing you're going to attract it more. It's kind of like when you're looking for a car or something, all of a sudden you see all the same cars on the road. Whenever you find one that you really love, it's like you feel like they're attracted to you. It keeps coming into your environment. Energy is the same way. It's the exact same way. So you just, you just got to focus on the life that you want, the things that you want to bring into your life. And this seriously changed my life because I was having, I kept getting into abusive relationships. And I thought, what is wrong with me? Is and that's true. Broken? That's a thing. That's a pattern. That, yeah. So, okay. Yep. And it was like, what is wrong? Why do I keep finding these guys? After I started working on myself, um, I started attracting a totally different type of people in my life. I have the love of my life sitting back there. Uh, we've been married almost three years now. 
I never thought I would be in a ha I never thought I'd be in a happy marriage. I just thought that I was just destined to repeat this cycle and it's broken. It's completely broken because <laughs> I started changing me and my beliefs and started attracting something. So you better. were thinking less of yourself and that's why you yes. were getting that and so Yep. So you might not have been necessarily negative, but you're yep. you were negative towards yourself, so then it projected other people seeing you negatively or something like that. Yes. You're saying? Okay. I, I so I was raised with that and I had these traumas from my childhood, which a lot of us go through these things with right. self esteem and stuff. So I had all these low self esteem, didn't think very good of myself. So when those people came along, I just thought that's what I deserved. I didn't deserve any better. So when I started working on myself and loving myself more and doing the inner healing work, it started attracting people that loved me and wanted to continue that energy. So yeah, it's everything. It really is. <laughs> that is really cool. Okay, so how do people sign up for sessions with you and how expensive typically in the ballpark, you don't have to give exact prices, but how is it kind of like getting therapy? I know it's different, so explain yeah. that. It's it's not that much. I try to keep it low because I know there's a lot of people who are in bad situations and I try to think of how I would feel when I was trying to get out. So it's like $77 a session is what I start with. And of course a free consultation, they can call me and talk about it and see if they feel comfortable with it. And we'll, we'll find out if we want to do like an emotion code, body code session, or maybe we just want to put their um, profile in a scanner and do some scans and then they can look at their reports and use the frequencies from the device to help reset everything in their body to rebalance it. So there's so many different Oh, the modalities. actual, the frequencies can reset it, just yes. doing that. Yeah, they can get a scan on here and also at the same time have frequencies broadcast to them through the scalar waves that will help rebalance their body's frequencies. Well, that's awesome. And then yeah. do, what's your social media? Can we all get a hold of you on that? I know you're really yeah. good on Facebook. Or do you have Instagram? Yes, it's lighthouseenergyhealing.com. So on Instagram and Facebook. And do you That's share cool. a lot of like the success stories or when you learn something? Are you, are you active in that way on your social media? I try to. I try to share something. I forget to ask people to give me their testimony when they're done. I just get busy at work. Well, and the animal <laughs> thing is impressive. I never yeah. knew about that. But it makes yeah. sense that they yeah. have all that and everything you're saying. I've seen yeah. animal. Tri like I've seen that. So I'm like, well, that makes sense that you would do that. And they pick up our frequencies too. So it's funny whenever you put a, an animal into the scanner and you scan them a lot of times they're having the same kind of emotional things that their owners do because they're they're right. so linked to them they pick up that vibration your animals always know when you're not feeling good you know they always come around and want to sit on your lap when you're not feeling good <laughs> so how do you deal with bad days now like your new improved stuff how do you deal with a bad day and bad i energy? just try to usually i'll go scan myself and see if there's something out of balance and just send myself frequencies or I'll um, muscle test, like before I was feeling a lot of anxiety out there. So I just like quickly said, do I have some anxiety to release? And I was like, yes. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna release this anxiety. I'm gonna let this go. And and the swiping is there's a governing meridian line that's um, from the top of your head and runs all the way down your bo back of your body. Okay. And he discovered that you could, um, you could just swipe like across this meridian line because it's um it disrupts the magnetic field the energy field around your body and you can just like with intention say i'm releasing this and kind of like a credit card strip if you get magnet over it it'll disrupt the credit card and it won't work anymore the numbers won't work it's kind of the same concept it's like you're just you, disrupting this magnetic field that's around your body and releasing those traumatic energies that is so cool. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much for coming You're on welcome. the show and teaching this. I, do, on your social media, do you ever do like little like sessions like daily where you tell people about different because you have so many like great tips yeah. that that's really impressive. I should do it more. I need to get out there more, but I'm still trying to to get myself out there to do that stuff too, you know. And so right now you have a good clientele, but you're open for more clients? <laughs> yes, yes. And I'm also doing something else right now on the side. There's never enough, you know. So <laughs> I'm also trying to help businesses. So I partnered with this company and we're trying to help businesses save a lot of money on their taxes and stuff. So I thought I'd mention that. Oh, awesome. <laughs> oh, that helps. Okay, yeah. so then businesses yeah. need to consult with you. Yeah. There's, so what company is that that you're working with? If, if you're a business owner and you have 10 or more W-2 employees, you can save a significant amount of money on your taxes because of this new program that came out and a lot of businesses don't even know about it. They can save like 700 to 800 per employee annually. 
and their employees get four to six percent back in their paychecks plus a whole lot of other benefits and it's like it can be like an add-on so they don't have to change a lot and there's no out-of-pocket costs so McDonald's, Culver's, P.F. Chang's, Costco, some of those places are using it. And I talked to like, um, I think it was Tiffany at Clovis Unified School District. They could be saving $4 million in their school district if they could get this program going. And Fresno could be saving over $2 million. And I don't even know if they know about it. So I'm trying to get a hold of the right people. Okay, so where do we contact you for that? Do you have yeah. a number or a website for that? Yeah, they can go to that website or call me, 559-903-9597. They can text me. And what's the and website? It's lighthouseenergyhealing.com. I can call you for that, yeah. too. And the, yeah. for the, oh, my gosh, this is so great. You're a one-stop shop. I love that. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming yeah. on my show today. Thank you for having me on here. You made it so comfortable. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Always love. 
lost in my head Cause nothing else here matters at all This time, how long, how long, how long will last? Anxiety is a bastard My heart keeps racing faster Until I'm back alone in my room What's all this commotion? I don't see the point in your view Maybe someday I'll find peace of mind that I can hold on to For coming on the show today, guys. Okay, I love the name of your band. Who came up with it? I did. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah. so why? Um, well, it's just a recreation of yourself. You present yourself any way you want as you get older, and you're a new person, so I say the new them. The new them. So, you guys were all on board with it? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, he was he a was, he, yeah, he was a solo artist before we hopped on. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? He's had several, like, little incarnations of this band, so. Okay, so how long have you three been together? Uh, we've been together for about like a month. A month. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you and what were the bands that you guys came from? Uh, me and him are in Skank Stomp together with, with his girlfriend. She's on drums, and then I'm in Paris on Fire, and Pagan Holiday. So we kind of just have like a whole thing going on right now. <laughs> so why did you three come together? Because he needed help. Plus, we sound the best together. Oh really? Yeah, it's okay. Like, it's more like a super group at this point because we're coming <laughs> from different bands. So what band were you with? Well, I was a solo artist with this band, and then oh, okay. yeah, I was bringing in different members, but this is the best lineup that I've had You so were, like, far. really active, though. You were doing a lot yeah. of stuff. Yeah. And you guys have actually gotten, like, booked on some things together with this band. So tell us about the um, April 20th. Uh, well, I have uh, me and my girlfriend, we do a house show in Exeter every, like, month usually. Or we'll do it in our house, or we'll do it at a place called the Rock Yard, which is... Kind of downtown Exeter. So you live in Exeter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so the how is you just let whatever people come to your house? How do you facilitate that? Um, I get a porta potty. That's important. I don't want people <laughs> in my house. It's all in my backyard, and my front yard. So the front yard right. is all vendors. You got the property to do it. So. Yeah. Um, and then the backyard is all the bands, and it's it used to be twenty one and up, but now it's all ages. We just ID just in case people have beers. Just right. Safe. You know, we don't want to run afoul with the cops over there. So I try, try and stay on their good graces. That's really cool that, that you go through all that. You do that. That's actually how we met, and uh, we found James and got him into our band and stuff because we would go out and play their shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's our favorite spot to go play. Yeah, I had them uh, come to our house before when they had their last lineup, and then I, you know, I pretty much I met all these guys through, through my house show. <laughs> but that, I've never even heard of that. You people just come to the house, and that's that's your thing. And that's kind of big in LA. A lot of people do stuff like that there. I don't hear of a lot of that happening out here. Because here it's a smaller, it, it's, you know, cop. Well, here stuff. in Fresno, I mean, <laughs> they used to happen pretty frequently, but after the pandemic, they kind of died out. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, so yeah, so it's easier to do stuff like that, fun stuff in Exeter than Fresno. 
I don't know. I mean, it's a smaller town, and as long as you don't do nothing stupid or let people be too stupid, they don't really mess with you. I've been living there long enough to where I think I, I do the karaoke in the town, so like people, oh. people are probably, probably like, oh, well, whatever, let them do whatever. <laughs> so is it just this band, or do you have a lineup of more bands that's going to be at the oh, April yeah, 20th like event? Five. I don't remember exactly who's playing. Um, that's the April one, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so I, I think, I think some, one is uh, Wandering Lotus, uh, Laser, and. Oh, Yanni. Yanni. Yanni, 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 I think, is from like North Carolina. So we're. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Is Rotten Apple playing that one? No, I think that's the one before. I think it, we have one on fr Friday this week. <laughs> so we got, I think we got Rotten Apple. So what, what are you doing on Friday? Is that a house party that's as well? That's another house show, yeah. At your house? Yeah. Okay. It's in Exeter. <laughs> if you want to look it up, if they want the app. Yes, that's so, so where do we do it? You can look it up on the house show Exeter on uh, Instagram. And then it'll, it'll if we have all Oh, so you have a separate Instagram for that? Yeah. That's separate from the band? Oh, totally, yeah. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. Okay, so what's the, um, how much does it cost to usually get tickets? Like five or ten bucks. That's cool. Yeah, no, we keep it cheap just so everybody can do it, because all these places charging 20, 25 bucks, like, you kind of get a whole demographic of, like, I'm, I'm broke as hell, dude. <laughs> so, I mean, it's nice to have a, you know, a cheap, a cheap show to go to. I just think, I just do things the way that I would want to do stuff, I guess. That makes like that, sense. You know? So, what's it like from being solo to now having these guys? Uh, that's a dream come true. Um, solo is fun, but the full band sound is amazing. It's everything I've wanted. And these songs I've written on acoustic, so to bring it over to an electric guitar and drums and bass, it's lively. It make, I have goosebumps after playing them. It's, yeah, it's definitely more of a feel. What were you singing when you were doing just acoustic shows? I was going uh, to Bakersfield, to Dinuva, Exeter, um, Lindsay, Fresno recently this year, and Visalia. And so it was a lot of cover bands at that point. Do you guys have any um, new work together, or was it just separately? Oh, uh, that you're creating new singles with with this band? Yeah, or just a whole unit of everything. No, I know you had your own. You were doing oh, we your own we music. Yeah, yeah, you were all doing it. So as the three of you guys got together, do you have like a song that you guys I have think, been working on? I think we're still pretty new, and we're learning a lot of his previous stuff. Right. And then from there it'll yeah, just we still be have a few more to go before yeah. we would write. Yeah, a whole catalog, together, man. Yeah. It was busy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> have you learned how any of their songs? Uh yeah, I had a jam session with them at the house show and um, we just practiced each band's songs and I was helping them out. It's just practice. Yeah, that is a lot though to kind of like okay, now we're doing this like one. Musical chairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Uh, we were having like my practice and then right after we'd have a, one of their bands practice and right after another band uh you know, one of theirs practice and it was just like a long all day practice from all three of our bands. Okay, so people want to book you. Do we go to your Instagram? Yeah, so uh, if you want to reach out to the new them, you would book us through Facebook, Instagram, mainly those two. Yeah. And then you guys will play everywhere kind of in the Central Valley. I mean, you're used to traveling, you guys are in Exeter, so you guys are down to go wherever, wherever uh, we yeah, need no, to go. Uh, a lot of my bands have played in uh, like Anaheim and stuff. I'm originally, I'm from, I'm from Long Beach, so I, I kind of, Every so often, I ship people down there. And oh my gosh, how'd you end up in Exeter? Uh, my uncle died, and I moved up here ten years ago to take care of my great grandma, and uh, I've just never left. You know, she 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 passed, and I just stayed here. <laughs> oh my I goodness! Felt, I felt needed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but then you'll go back because you still have like your connections and your friends out there. Yeah, I've got friends and family and stuff. So I mean, I go out there every so often. We'll get like an Airbnb and just hang out and drink beers. <laughs> what do you like going and traveling that far? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I haven't got to play outside of the valley that much, but uh, we went down to Oxnard one time. June right second, and then yeah, stop. we're gonna go. Uh, is that a in Oxnard? That's a, no, it's, the that's Anaheim. Hunt. It's a doll hunt. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna go play in Anaheim and, uh, on June second. Wow, yeah. so you guys are getting everywhere. That's so cool. And then, are you happy to do more stuff locally? Because you were traveling a lot. Yeah, I um, I can start actually building a like a basis of like, all right, this is his band, this is his sound, and right. then I can travel outward and go from there. So what do you guys hope to accomplish? Where do you guys see yourselves going as a band? To be stable enough to keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, I want to just be able to consistently stay, consistently stay booked and consistently writing new music, having the time and funding for it. And do you not go anywhere to like back to Bakersfield and doing all those private parties you were doing? Yeah, I, I do. I was recently in Bakersfield at uh, Riley's Tavern on like last Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was St. Patrick's Day. Ago, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had a gig out there. It was popping. How fun! 
So we can hire you on your Instagram. And right now it's, um, we have April 20th, June for the Anaheim. What else do we have? Any other dates that you can tell us uh, off top? We have one coming up. In the, we're on the 23rd. On this Saturday, we're going to be playing at the Fulton. And uh, it's, uh, it's on Fulton Street in downtown. It's not Fulton 55. It always gets a... Uh, confused with that. Oh, thanks for letting yeah. us know that. Okay. Yeah, no, so, I got confused with that. I made a flyer. I'm confused yeah. when you just told me that right now. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know there was another place called the Fulton. That's not the Fulton video. Okay. It used to be a, it's formerly known as Le Mason Kebab. Oh, yeah. I know where that is. Oh, that place? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. that place is gone? Yeah. They keep uh, on going through different um, name changes, yeah. so that's why it's confusing. I played there once, and that food was so good. I know, yeah. that was really good, really good food. Good we we like really that. Good. Yeah. <laughs> but that's good you're not super booked so that if someone wants to get you in on their party we got we got time we'll just text you right away and be like hey and then you guys do a lot of requests uh, as well on covers i mean i'm pretty sure we could it'll take a little bit you know we're still yeah. fresh as a as a lineup so i mean we're still getting used to playing together and all that stuff but once once we build our catalog it'll be pretty cool we'd probably we could probably swing that <laughs> so how has your sound changed with these guys it feels more uh like pop punk or just it, more aggressive because uh, before on myself it was just kind of it was soft and it was like okay well this is intimate but now that i have a full band it just seems like bang right in your face so now we can party more it's like more yeah, of a party now, yeah now you could like actually scream woo and well, not be like oh well that was kind of embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> are you guys looking to get any more band members to collab with Probably just uh, instruments that we don't have, like a pianist would be nice or synth player, yeah. What about more singers? I would like to have backup singers. I, I do have ideas for these songs to have just one set of backup singers. Ooh, that'd be exciting. What about your other bands? Who sings on those ones? Uh, so with Skank Stump, it's me, him, and, and his girlfriend Maddie, and she, she sings, she and, plays sings and plays drums. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then nice. he does some backups and, and guitar, and then I just do bass for that one. And then uh, Paris on Fire... It's a little bit bigger of a lineup. I do the the programming for it because we we're, we're still working on getting her, her uh, you know, her, his. Uh, sorry, I'm all. Talking. You're good. <laughs> there's a lot. There's so much. You're a busy. You're busy. Interconnected yeah. stuff. So we're trying to get Maddie, uh, the drummer and singer for Skank Stump, to be our drummer for Paris on Fire, and that one's uh, Kaylee Noble, Sal. What the heck is Sal's last name? Sal Braun, uh, Evan Viscara, and me. So we we do like kind of post punky, new wavy like. Um, let's see, how would you describe that? If like, if like the Interpol had a lot more synthesizers and a girl singer. So if you mix like nice. Le Lena Lovitch and, and our B-52s and Interpol, it'd be kind of like Love that. Love it. Yeah. Okay, so what Instagram should we be following besides this All band? Them. All of them. Okay, so that's, list them off again. It's, Shoot, um, there's uh, the House Show Exeter. There's, is, what's the New Them's one? The New Them? Oh, the it's new just them. the New okay, Them, yeah. yeah. And then Skank Stomp is skank.stomp. And then uh, there's Paris on Fire Band, and then there's uh, Pagan Holiday. Pagan Holiday is my solo stuff. Okay. It's all folk punk. <laughs> Love it. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on the show today, and I hope I can make it out to one of your shows. Heck, yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we hope to see you there. Yeah, thank you for having us. Felt right in the morning. Felt right in the summertime. Felt right drinking cherry wine with you. Just wanted to own. Just wanted to take the time Learn all the things that I could about you Now it's such a mess here Oh, we are just stressed here Used to be so easy with you Now I must confess here Oh, I must confess, dear Don't think I'm in love with you Winter is coming And I don't know what to do there's no more use in running, no more running to you And I don't want your loving, I don't want to be just friends Knowing all this time